Simon McCoy. Simon, over to you. Matthew, thank you very much. Yes, the body now in the chapel of St Mary Undercroft within the Palace of Westminster. And there'll be a short service starting uh, in the next half hour or so to be attended by a hundred people, including, of course, the Thatcher family and those who knew Lady Thatcher close to her in the world of politics. And uh, watching as her coffin arrived here at Westminster were the historian Kate Williams, who joins me, and Peter Power, a security consultant. Thank you both for being with us. Kate, first of all, as the hearse arrived here, you, you very much got a sense of, of the historical importance of what we're seeing here today. Yes, this is a very significant historical moment. Of course, it's not a state funeral, but it really is a state funeral in all but name. The last time anyone would have seen this would be for Winston Churchill in 1965, and the next time any of us will see the like again, I think, will be when Her Majesty the Queen does pass away. The crypt where the body is, is, is now lying is, is an interesting building in its own, own right because it isn't actually part of the Palace of Westminster, is it? Yes, it's a slight anomaly. The crypt was once part of St. Stephen's Chapel, which was a royal chapel from the, dating from the 13th century. But that burnt down in 1834 in the great burning of the Houses of Parliament. And this has remained St. Mary Undercroft, the only part of it. And it is actually under the jurisdiction of the monarch, not of, under the jurisdiction of any bishop. What it's mainly used for is the marriages and christenings of MPs and peers. But we have had, when it was St. Stephen's Chapel, kings and important signatures lying in state there. One of the last was um, the great King Henry IV. Peter, what will be the sense now that the body has been moved from its location in North London to here? We saw hers being driven through the streets of London with the uh, attendant uh, motorcyclists. How will they be feeling now that they've got this stage over? Well, let's remember, of course, all this planning took place many years ago, uh, and we mentioned earlier today, talking about how Margaret Thatcher herself was involved in planning in December of 2011. But today, the first stage is done, an enormous sigh of relief in Scotland Yard. It's something I've never seen before, that the three police officers on motorcycles in front of the hearse had taken off their yellow jackets, and I, I strongly believe as a mark of respect for their helmets were still white. So there's a sense of relief, but of course, tomorrow's another day. And uh, we are still living in a world, in the UK at least, where the threat level is defined as highly probable for a terrorist attack, and that weighs heavily. Uh, it may weigh heavily, but it's been in place now for some time, yes, and yes. the Metropolitan Police and others involved in the security here yes. have been working under that remit for some time. I know, it might go up to the next limit, uh, which actually is less of a highly likely. Well, why, why, why would it? Well, what it means in this, in this world of security, once you've gone to some substantial to severe, and these are the code words, it means certain things happen and certain people run around, it means much more to the public listening, it means absolutely nothing, to be honest with you. So the threat's there, but let's not, let's not imagine it's just terrorism. You've got the two groups of people, you've got protesters, you've got people like the uncut people, you've also got a group known as Anonymous, uh, who pose a particular threat, and of course they were very active indeed, at, outside some halls, uh, with their tents for several days. So I think we may see some action to tomorrow, but maybe not today. And of course there is a military aspect to tomorrow's funeral. Uh, in these modern times, how, how does that change how the police operate? Presume when you've got guns around, things, things have changed in this world of political correctness, should I say? Right, that's a bit, but in the world of PC, something I was told the other day was that the, the Honourable Artillery Company, who are firing some uh, finger guns that were, that were used in the Falklands, have been told under health and safety rules only to put a six charge ounce, or six ounces rather, in the barrel of the gun, because it's too noisy. Uh, and that's quite interesting, but when the Queen Mother died in 2002, I think the charge was twice as much as that. So health and safety creeps in everywhere, but on the gun side, the real worry is when you have dignitaries who bring their own bodyguards and their own guns, and I know from the police point of view, I'm always a bit worried about that, so let's see how it goes tomorrow. Well, so far it has gone, as, as, as these events tend to, like clockwork, hasn't it? It is, I, and I think one of the reasons, because we're, we're standing here surrounded by the paraphernalia of what's gone on before, and the police sort of ideology, the whole, whole structure for them is based on taking reasonable steps against unreasonable people. Uh, and that's not a bad philosophy to follow. Peter, Kate, thank you both very much for joining us again here on BBC News. Full coverage of the funeral at St Paul's Cathedral here on the BBC News channel tomorrow. But for now, back to you, Jane and Matthew. Simon, thanks very much. Thank you.